watching KCMI TV. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about something because of where we're all at right now. And I, I would think that it's probably the same for most believers, but there's, a, there's so much pressure on us. And I think part of it is, <clears throat> the scripture talks about this in the last days, that the enemy would try to wear out the saints. And wearing out something is, it's a process. It's just over time. And of course, a lot of us at the beginning of the change that we've seen in the earth the last two or three years, we felt like probably at the beginning it would last a couple months, three months, whatever, and be resolved. And here we are getting ready to go into our third year. And I'm noticing that for a lot of believers, they're the resolve is beginning to break down and there's just this feeling of maybe we just ought to acquiesce we're tired of fighting and i don't think that we can ever allow ourselves to truly assume that position because we are children of god and so um, <clears throat> there are storms that that come against all of us i think all of us could look back over our lives and think of some storms that we've encountered uh, sometimes those storms are much greater than other times. Um, you know, I've had some storms in my life that I look back and they were truly hurricanes. They literally destroyed so much. And then there are others that weren't so much. But I think that many, many times that storms come because their purpose is to separate us from Jesus Christ. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being in the storm because <clears throat> I think of the verse it says that thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. And I'm going to tell you something that there are some storms that you and I can't fix. And I think probably that's where we are right now as a church and as believers. Uh, only God can fix this one. And there are times that we've just got to relax and we've got to settle down and tell the Lord, I'm putting this in your hands because I can't fix, fix this. Frustration comes when we try to navigate something that we don't have the ability to. And uh, I think that we're all in a place where it's going to take God to step in and take care of this. And there's a lot of believers right now that the enemy has gotten a hold of their mind and put it in chaos and confusion. And at all times, this is why the scripture says that thou will keep him in complete peace. That's the word perfect. It literally means complete or mature peace whose mind is stayed on thee. This is why I said that storms come to separate us from the Lord Jesus, because if the enemy can get your mind, get you to shift your emphasis from Christ to the storm, then he wins. And I remember the story in the scriptures where the Bible says that the disciples seasoned fishermen got in the boat and Jesus was with them and they're making the journey across the lake and immediately a huge storm comes up and this was unlike other storms that the disciples had encountered. Water begins to come into the boat and I've been on the Sea of Galilee. It's a, it's a very, very large lake and they say that there can be waves at times that are 8, 10, 12 feet high and of course, the boats that those fishermen had in that day were not like the boats that we think of today. They were smaller. And the disciples are in this boat and this storm has hit them. Um, it's, it's interesting to think about this because the water, that lake had been the disciples' friend. They had grown up on that lake. It's where they made their living. They pulled the fish out of that lake. There probably were times that they just got in that lake in the boat to relax and enjoy the beauty of it. And what they were used to became their enemy in a moment. And sometimes the enemy will take things that you're familiar with and reverse them on you. And it so catches you off guard that you don't know what to do. And this is why your mind has to be stayed on Christ. 
and the disciples as seasoned as they were on that lake. This storm exceeded their abilities. Can I tell you that what we've encountered in the last few years has exceeded the ability of us in our own strength? And this is why I think maybe God has allowed this saying to drag out some is because he's trying to get us as a church to turn our attention back into the Lord. God wants to be needed. He wants to be called on. When you read this story, uh, the Bible says Jesus was asleep. But I can promise you, he knew what was going on. He's in that boat, and to the disciples, he was asleep. But I think it's very possible that Jesus was laying in the bottom of that boat, thinking, when are they going to come ask for help? And it wasn't until they were literally overwhelmed, and they were beginning to go down, that they came to Jesus. The Lord is always present in every storm that we're in. But you have to wake him up. You have to be the one that comes to the Lord and say, I, I need you to help me. I need you to step in here and, and do something. And so storms, uh, they do a few things. If you don't navigate it right, you don't turn to the Lord, what it, ha what it does, it digs a hole and it just sticks you in it. And in a storm, you're either going to go down or else you're going to rise up above it. And people that have great faith learn how to rise above the storms of the moment. And a lot of us would not be here today if it was not for the fact that our mind was stayed on Jesus Christ. Um, for a lot of people in a storm, either Jesus begins to get smaller to them or else he gets a lot bigger to them. And when you say, what do you mean smaller? Well, I, I think here's the way to put it. I think a lot of people uh, love the Lord. They walk with him. They, they think that God can do anything. But then when that storm comes unexpected and it's so big and it's so sudden and it's so powerful that they get their eyes off of Jesus and the storm becomes bigger than the Jesus in the boat. And whenever your storm, the enemy can make your storm look bigger than your creator, you lose. And what God wants us to do is stay in a place. This is why David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. There are seasons where God has to become bigger than your storm. I can think back in my lifetime, and I'm sure some of you can too, that I was in a difficult place, but in that season, in that moment, God became bigger to me than the environment that I was in that was devastating. And when your God becomes bigger than your storm, that storm will acquiesce and bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ. And all it took was the disciples finally coming to the Lord as a last-ditch effort and saying, God, will you help us? And the Lord Jesus just stands up on the bow of the boat. He doesn't do anything great. He just says, peace, be still. And immediately, the Bible says, nature laid down. He spoke to the winds that were causing the waves. God can speak to the winds of your life. May God speak to the winds that are raging over this nation and over the earth. And uh, we, you and I have so many brothers and sisters that are in other nations. And of course, we in the United States, uh, a lot of you do not have the exposure to saints, but we get so many emails and um, the body of Christ is all over the world, and many of them are suffering in much greater magnitude than what we are in the U.S. And I, I would encourage you that when you pray, that you would intercede for those around the world that are in the storm of their life, that Jesus would step up, hallelujah, on the bow of the boat and begin to declare freedom and liberty over these men and women's lives. And um, there is something powerful about walking in covenant with God. You remember in the Old Testament when Goliath saw David coming, and of course in the natural, it looked like uh, an impossible win for David. He was outsized, he was outmatched. 
Uh, he did not have the warfare experience that Goliath had had, no telling how many men Goliath had killed, how many battles that he had been in. But what he didn't realize that though David didn't bear the scars, he'd already killed a lion and a bear because God was preparing him for that moment. And the point I want in this story to stand out is Goliath begins to rage against David. He begins to declare what he's going to do to him. And probably he had done it in the past to other people. But David looked at Goliath, and boy, they were in a storm. Israel looked like they were getting ready to go into bondage. Their king had failed. Their army had failed. Fear had gripped all of Israel, and out of the ashes, hallelujah, comes his teenage boy that knows how to praise God, and he looks at the Goliath. He says, I don't care what you say and what you've done in the past. He said, you can't win, and he said, the reason you can't win is you're uncircumcised, which meant you are not in covenant with Jehovah, and he said, I am in covenant with Jehovah, so he said, this fight is fixed. I want to declare to you today that those that rage against the church and are trying to destroy the earth and our freedom, I declare to you they cannot win because they are not in covenant with God. You and I are in covenant. We may look like the David. We may look like the young man. We may not have the weapons of the world in our hands, but the weapons of our warfare are not natural weapons. They're the weapon of covenant. They're the weapon that Christ, one, one scripture talks about that that the God of peace has to rule your heart, not visit. He has to rule it. And I think that one of the things that helps me a lot in my walk with God is that I have allowed Jesus to set up in my heart and he rules it. That means he controls what comes in and goes out. That when we walk into these storms, when we get on the boat of familiarity, when we get out on the Sea of Galilee that up until this time they had never been outmatched by it, it was their friend. And then in a moment, what was their friend became their enemy. The fact that they had Jesus in the boat guaranteed their deliverance. You and I have Jesus in our lives. And you and I are in covenant with God. So regardless of what country you're in as you listen to me today, regardless of how evil your leader is, regardless of how locked down you are, he whom the Spirit has set free is free indeed. You hold on to God. Don't let the storm that you're in right now separate you from God. This is why Paul said nothing can separate me from the love of God. And then he names storms, tribulation, distress, persecution, nakedness, peril, famine, sword, height, death, angels, principalities, death, nor life shall be able to separate me. There was no storm, Paul said, that can separate me from the love of God. You are powerful in the Lord. And if you're in covenant, Whatever storm you're in, look around you, see where Jesus is. Say, Lord, I need you to step up to the bow of my life. I need you to talk to this storm and tell it to lay down, and it will. Stay strong in the Lord. Be encouraged in God. We will triumph. I promise you that. God bless you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.
Thank you.